the world would be entirely different. It would resemble nothing like our world today. There would be no war or violence because if you've had an experience like mine, you know absolutely that God is in control, that there is life after death. God loves each and every one of us. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And we're here on earth to do the work we've come to do. And everything else is extraneous. <laughs> so it would be a very, very, very different place. But there's something very powerful in free will and free choice. I believe that God is present and active every day in every life. And I think that it takes effort and time to look for God, expect to find God, and see God. And unfortunately for most people, <laughs> it's always looking backwards. It's always retrospective. But there's no question that if you actually look, you will find the ways that God has led you and guided you and supported you and loved you. And so what I encourage people to do, and my hope in sharing my experience with others, is really to inspire them to put out the effort to look. Because I absolutely believe that if you look at your life and look with an open heart, you will find God working in your life. And as you do that, you'll make a transformation from a, a hope or a faith that maybe God is real and maybe the promises are true to an absolute trust that the promises of God are true. All of them. <laughs> and that acceptance profoundly changes the way you experience every moment of every day. I'm still a scientist <laughs> and I'm still a realist and a very pragmatic person and a very skeptical person. And I will say that when I returned to Earth, I was still my skeptical self. This experience had nothing to do with dreams or hallucinations. Or so I spent a lot of time looking into and thinking about whether it could just be the chemical effect of a dying brain. But a brain can hang on to oxygen for somewhere in the range of six minutes and then it spends a couple of minutes going through its process of truly dying. And if my experience had lasted eight, nine, maybe even ten minutes, I probably, if you talk to the people who resuscitated me, they would say that this experience lasted about 30 minutes. I tend to focus on 15 minutes or 20 minutes because that's the amount of time that was on their watch recorded. But even at 15 or 20 minutes, that's too long <laughs> for the human brain to survive. And it's too long for medicine or scientific evidence to explain it as something other than what I know to be true, which is that it was a near-death or after-death experience. First of all is that spirituality and science are not in conflict. I, and I think it's this artificial sense of control that we as people and we as scientists have put on our world. We want to understand something, define it, and in doing so, we can control it. And we can control the outcome. I think that many people, and certainly many doctors, um, are very self-confident. <laughs> and we like to believe that we can control the variables and control the outcome of, say, a surgery or some other treatment. And one of the problems is that if you accept that there is life after death, and if you accept that there is a God, 
you have to accept that God is in control, which means I'm not in control. <laughs> and that, I think, is a very difficult thing for many people, most people. It changes the way I interact with patients because as a spine surgeon, I oftentimes have patients who have had devastating injuries, injuries that dramatically change their life, uh, dramatically change their ability to go to work. And I know without a doubt that those injuries and those challenges are part of God's plan for their life. And I absolutely know that there is beauty in that. And I may not know what the beauty is or what will come of that, but I absolutely know there is beauty. And so I absolutely am able to help patients see it as an opportunity. And I have seen it again and again and again where patients have had a devastating injury and their life has gone on to be something that they never would have imagined and never would have been possible had they not had that injury. So it does change the way I interact with patients, but I think it changes the way I interact with the world because I absolutely believe that once you make the transformation from a faith in the promises of God to a trust, then you can face any challenge, any situation, you can, cha you can face any future with a sense of absolute confidence and joy because you know there's going to be beauty.